In April of 2018, the country of Mexico received shocking news. Cristian Omar Palma Gutierrez, a young Mexican rapper whose videos have attracted millions of views on YouTube, made a confession to the police that made headlines. Just 24 years old at the time, the talented rapper who was at the start of a promising musical career confessed to being involved in a gang-related crime that had caused no small stir in the city of Guadalajara, Mexico City and the entire country of Mexico at large. It all started on the 19th of March, 2018, just a month before Cristian Omar Palma Gutierrez, who is also known as QBA, made his confession. This was the day that three film students, 25-year-old Javier Salomón Acives Castellum, 20-year-old Marco Garcia Francisco Avalos, and 20-year-old Jesus Daniel Diaz, were last seen alive. These three young people were students at CAAV, the University of Audiovisual Media in Guadalajara, Mexico. They were working on a school project and were filming at a house that was loaned to them for their project by one of their aunts. According to eyewitnesses, these students were last seen being forced into a car by armed men dressed as police officers. The disappearance of the three students sparked an outburst from the people of Mexico, and even internationally. There were several protests all around the country. Thousands of students of the University of Audiovisual Media came out on the streets, raising their voices as well as placards. We're students, not criminals, they protested. Will I be next? These people were outraged, not just because of the disappearance of the three young men, but because of the ongoing violence, illegal activities, and general unlawfulness that had taken over the state of Jalisco and even the country of Mexico in general. At the time of this protest, there were over 30,000 unsolved cases of missing people in Mexico. The nation was experiencing a record-breaking occurrence of these crimes. It was also just coming out of its deadliest year in recent history, with 25,300 homicides in just one year. Even the state of Jalisco had experienced a record-breaking amount of murders, 1,369 murders in 2017. The protests gathered a lot of momentum and support. The international film industry as well participated in the protests via social media, including Oscar-winning director Guillermo del Toro. However, despite the mass protests on the street of Mexico and on the internet, remained a mystery. But this changed a month later when the Mexican authorities revealed the results of their investigation in a news conference. While the students left the house that served as their filming location, they were with four other people. One of their cars broke down as they were leaving the area. At this point, about six heavily armed men pulled up to them in two pickup trucks. The men were dressed as law enforcement agents and forced the three students to the ground. They then forcefully put them into one of the pickup trucks and drove away. According to the authorities, the house the students were using had previously served as a safe house for the drug syndicate known as the Nueva Plaza Cartel. Unfortunately, the students were not aware of this fact. Unknown to them as well, the aunt that had lent them the house was associated with the drug cartel. As it turns out, the death of the students may have occurred simply because they were in the wrong place at the wrong time. Members of a rival cartel by the name of Cartel de Jalisco Nueva Generación, in English, the New Generation Jalisco Cartel, had been keeping an eye on the safe house. Seeing the young men at the location, these cartel members may have mistaken the students for members of the Nueva Plaza cartel. They captured the students and drove them to another location for interrogation. The students were tortured and according to reports, they beat up one of them so bad that he died. Because of this, the captors had to execute the other two students. Unfortunately, the story gets more shocking. The victims, now dead, were transported to yet another location. Here, the investigators found more than 40 barrels of sulfuric acid. They believed that the bodies were dissolved, which was a common practice among cartels to get rid of every trace of evidence. Upon hearing this, people took to social media to express their grief, disheartened by the unfortunate and avoidable deaths of the three students. They used the hashtag, No Somos Tres, Somos Todos which translates to, it's not three, it's all of us. Notable film director Guillermo del Toro, whose hometown is Guadalajara, spoke out via Twitter. He tweeted in Spanish, words can't explain the dimension of this madness. Three students are killed and dissolved in acid. The why is unthinkable, the how is terrifying. Nevertheless, not everyone was satisfied with the explanation the authorities gave. There were some speculations that the reason the students were captured and killed was as revenge on a rival cartel who one of the students may have been related to. 
Some found it hard to believe that three students carrying cameras and other filming equipment would have been mistaken for members of a cartel. However, as if the news was not shocking enough, the involvement of Cristian Omar Palma Gutierrez was soon brought to light. QBA's confession came the week after the authorities reported that the new generation Jalisco cartel was behind the killings and that the method of removing the bodies from the scene was dissolvement in acid. He came clean to the authorities about being the very one who had dissolved the bodies in the acid after the assassins had murdered the students. The then 24-year-old YouTube star was known for his songs and music videos which depicted life on the streets of Mexico. His usual themes told of drugs, weapons, and violence. In one of his songs, El Infierno, which literally translates to hell in English, he referred to the streets of Mexico as his hell. The music video displayed the crowded streets of Mexico with tough-looking men, some of them flashing knives, drinking, smoking drugs, and flashing gang hand signs. To make things even worse, all this was being done around very young children. One scene featured an ambulance in a hurry, and another showed him referring to the tough-looking men around him as the almost dead. Most of his songs released on YouTube followed the same idea, showing the violence that he was evidently well acquainted with. One of his music videos even showed him with a gun, hiding away, presumably from the authorities, like someone who had just committed a violent crime. However, despite the portrayal of violence in his songs and videos, Christian Omar doesn't seem like a criminal in all of his songs. In some of the songs and videos QBA published on YouTube, he seems more like a victim who had no choice and was forced into the life which he sang about several times. In fact, in another of his songs, he openly expressed that he felt like he was a bird flying aimlessly. What's more, he freely expressed regret about the things he had done. In a music video to the song, Si Mañana No Estoy, literally translated to, if I'm not here tomorrow, he was in a cemetery singing and rapping about his own death. He sang, if tomorrow I'm not here, I want to tell you how much I regret all that I did, all that I said. He went on to ask for forgiveness from his parents singing, Mom, Dad, forgive me, I couldn't escape the darkness. After the confession of his dark deeds were made public, it was even clearer that his songs and music videos were not just made up of stories for the purpose of entertainment, but they were pictures of the life that he lived. And maybe, just maybe, they were a cry for help that no one listened to. However, some people still didn't believe the rapper's confession. They speculated Gutierrez had been forced into making a false confession. These suspicions were quelled to an extent when the young rapper gave his testimony in court describing the details of his involvement in the disappearance of the students. According to his accountant, he worked as a cook for the new generation Jalisco cartel. This meant that he was responsible for dissolving corpses in tanks full of acid and disposing of the liquefied substance afterwards. The cartel paid him a sum of 3,000 pesos per week for the job, which was about $160 at the time. The new generation Jalisco cartel has been described as Mexico's fastest growing and most violent cartel. They are the second most powerful drug cartel in Mexico, after Cartel de Sinaloa, which was once led by the infamous El Chapo. The new generation Jalisco cartel had previously made headlines for their daring acts. Their extremism ranges from shooting down army helicopters and intimidating former attorney generals by sending them a pig's head. According to Cristian, he was contacted by someone from this cartel who had offered him a job at a mechanical workshop. QBA was to be paid about $80 to $100 for each job. However, this mysterious individual had offered Christian another job, one of which he would have to dispose of corpses. On the 20th of March, Christian received another phone call from this man, nicknamed El Cochi. El Cochi told him that they were going to dissolve bodies in acid. The new generation Jalisco cartel and other such violent criminal syndicates often referred to the act of dissolving the corpses of murdered victims in acid as pozolear, in reference to pozole, a well-known stew in Mexico. Cristian Omar went into detail about how the pair disposed of the bodies. Before leaving the house, he told his wife that he was going to be at the workshop painting a car. On getting to the cartel safe house where they were to dispose of the bodies, he filled a water tank in the yard of the safe house with acid. After that, he dumped the bodies headfirst into the tank. However, he still wasn't done. He would return to the safe house after two days. By then, the acid would have done its job of almost completely dissolving the corpses. 
Next, he would open the drainage valves so that the liquid can flow away through the storm drain. Finally, he would remove the remaining sludge at the bottom of the tank and dispose of it. The investigators confirmed Christian's story was true after finding some of the alleged sludge left from the bottom of one of the tanks. Upon further analysis, they found the DNA of up to 12 different people. Even though he confessed to the murder of the three students, the chief investigator, Lisette Torres, said that Christian had been involved in three other murders, and that part of the investigation involved coming through his songs and music videos. Christian and another suspect were arrested by the Mexican authorities and were detained on aggravated kidnapping charges. The producer of Christian's music videos, Sismo Garduno, noted that Gutierrez made about 3,000 to 6,000 pesos per month from his YouTube videos. This translates to $150 to $300. For a man with a wife and a child, this was hardly enough. Sismo described how QBA had dreams of making a good living from his music so that his family wouldn't have to struggle anymore. Unfortunately, it seems like these dreams may never come to pass. Gutierrez was put in prison under special protection because there are justified concerns that the cartel has plans to kill him for cooperating with the authorities. The life of Cristian Omar Palmar Gutierrez may have been one marked with violence. However, the question has been raised of what the talented young artist could have been had he not grown up in an area swarming with violence and crime. Don't forget to like this video and share it so you don't miss out on new videos. Hit the subscribe button and turn on post notifications. Until next time.